Um, in 2008, I, I, I flew to, uh, from Tokyo to Athens to attend the World Congress uh, meeting in Scots Island. The, uh, this is the, uh, the opening ceremony at the, the birthday place of uh, Western medicine. The Hippocrates, of course, was a Greek physician. As you know, that the, uh, the considered one of the most outstanding figures in the history of medicine. So the uh, the ceremony was. This, this is the opening ceremony of the uh, the World Congress in uh, in uh, in Kos Island in two, May uh, 2008 when I visited the, the last time here. So the, uh, the oh, back to the, uh, my topic, hypoplastic left eye syndrome. Uh, HLS, HLHS is a treasure of hyperplasia of the multiple left side structures of the heart. In the mitral valve, the left ventricle, aorta, and aortic arch. Variant include other univentricular heart with a subaortic obstruction, typically with the arch hyperplasia and the coaptation. Hyperplast uh, in one per uh, 5,000 live births, and the length and the fifth to eleventh the frequency of uh, a CHD in the multiple studies. And the uh, non cardiac anomalies occur in 11 to 37% of the patient, which is uh, completely different from uh, uh, transposition of the great arteries. So, development of the first stage palliation started in the 1960s uh, as uh, just a simple uh, palliation. But there are lots of hints from these uh, uh, previous trials. In 1968, uh, Sia reported in an American Journal of Cardiology of his first uh, a trial with uh, bilateral PA banding. By that time, no uh, prostaglandins. And in 1970, Ikea also reported and, uh, and commented that we consider palliation in selected cases of, of uh, hyperplasia of the left side of the heart to be indicated for the current rapid advance in cardiac therapy hold the promise of a curative procedure in near future. There are several reports published uh, uh, surgical uh, trials of uh, HLHS and the first Dotti reported the one-stage repair in 1977, and in, in 1980, Levski uh, reported the trials, his trials, but all of them are failed. In 1981, the Node reported the first successful case in a uh, journal of thoracic cardiovascular surgery. Uh, since the introduction of surgical palliation, the survival of uh, children with hyperplast have dramatically improved in the stage reconstructive surgery for the last two decades. Node procedure consists of reconstruction of neo aorta, an L2 primary artery shunt, and ASD creation. A pitfall of the procedure is not only to establish L2 primary artery shunt, but also creation of non obstructed neo aorta and, and the creation of ASD. And this is the same in RBPA shunt. This is uh, one of the most important papers published from uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. They reported their experience of 840 cases in 15 years. The result has improved uh, in each decade. However, mortality is still more than 30% in 1990s. If we carefully analyze these data, the many patients, oh, missed, 
a died successful node stage one procedure, there are uh, uh, a certain percent of the interstage deaths uh, during the first stage one, stage two, and also the uh, after the four turns. The cause of this after the modified node procedure, a study of 122 post-mortem cases uh, and run by uh, uh, Professor Van uh, Pride, uh, they reported the, uh, the most of the cause of this are uh, the, the coronary problem, impairment coronary artery perfusion, and excessive primary blood flow, and obstruction of the PA blood flows. So well, these are the most of the, the, the risk of this. If we uh, think of the node circulation, the node circulation consists of the balance between the primary and systemic circulation. And the primary circulation depends on the shunt between the aorta and the primary arteries. So over the last decade, therefore, there are many efforts to achieve balanced circulation and have focused on limited uh, primary blood flow and increasing uh, systemic oxygen delivery. Uh, this is the literature review of, uh, of the uh, big centers. All the big centers and all the excellent surgeons did uh, a huge number of cases, but but the uh, the still the the survivor of all these uh, uh, units uh, ranged uh, from uh, 50 to 70 percent. In October uh, 14 and 1984, Professor Bailey at the Loma Linda University Medical Center performed a xenotransplant using baboon. The heart transplant was successful. The baby Fay died 21 days later of heart failure due to the rejection of the transplant. This is the, uh, the, the newspapers, the baby's Fay. Because of the, uh, the result of a stage surgery of hyperplus, is much worse than uh, a cardiac transplant. Therefore, the, the high plus left heart syndrome was said to be a benchmark for the surgical treatment of congenital heart disease. If we think of the, the node stage one procedure, there are theoretical advantages and also the disadvantages. The improved coronary uh, uh, primary artery glows because of anti-grade shunt, but it's difficult to control QPQS and to keep balance between systemic and primary blood flow. The compromised coronary perfusion due to lower diastolic pressure, uh, so-called diastolic runoff into the shunt. Or other than the refinement of the, uh, and the post-operative management, there has been a developed new treatment, a new surgical technique, including an, uh, the mechanical uh, refinement of pre and the peri and post-op management, and also the mechanical assist device. Since the late 1990s, the management strategy has changed, uh, such as the use of uh, systemic vasodilators <coughs> using phenoxybenzamine or mirinone, and SV also monitoring and home surveillance and NIRS. Then the, then the result of the node stage one improved 
uh, from 80 to uh, uh, 70 to 90 percent. This is uh, the, the paper uh, the, from uh, uh, Los Angelida. They use a routine mechanical ventricular assist device following the node procedure. They improve neurological, neurological outcome and excellent hospital survivors. They uh, have a 23 patient and the ventricular assist device support time uh, average three days. That's complication 22% and hospital survivors 87%. So the question is, uh, should all the stage one node patients receive um, prolonged period post-operative mechanical psychiatric support? What we learned from uh, mechanical psychiatric support is to an uh, early establishment of, uh, of mechanical psychiatric support in case of marginal hemodynamics, not all, not all the cases. I think. The first success of node stage one in Loyal Children's and Hospital in Melbourne, where I, I, I worked before with Roger Mee and Bill Brown, was the, uh, the, the Roger did a lot of uh, a node uh, stage one procedure without any success. So Bill Brown and performed the, the case in, uh, on Sunday. Uh, as an emergency case in 1988. It was uh, uh, the post-operative, oxygen saturation was very bad, very severe hypoxia. So the bill set up, thank you very much for everyone. So uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we closed the chest and then, then and they transferred the baby to the ICU very quickly. So the, everyone was, uh, uh, agreed, that, or the anesthesiologist, uh, the ventilated very slowly, not usual. And so everyone thought, oh, the baby died soon. So we, the, the baby was transferred to the ICU, they rushed. But the, uh, the baby survived. The next day, the baby still survived with the, a little bit of pressure up, and the saturation is slowly go up. And finally, the baby survived. So the, the, the logician and Bill Brown asked me why this patient survived. Can you, can you, can you, can you check the, the papers and et cetera, et cetera. So I've, I, uh, I read lots of papers. Uh, I found that the, our post-operative management of the, after the neonatal surgery, uh, for example, the TGA is completely different from what we uh, uh, used to do. So I thought that too low dietary pressure, uh, very much in uncomfortable or small neonate. And uh, how to solve this problem? So, uh, I've developed a new surgical technique, the RVP con uh, conduit. The, uh, if you think of the hyperplast, the aortic atresia, we uh, changed the, the baby with the uh, aortic atresia to pulmonary atresia. But the sometimes, a, even a pulmonary atresia, sometimes the, the, the baby is collapsed because of the excessive ventilation is, uh, or, or the shunt size is bigger. So I thought if we can create tetralogy follow, not the pulmonary atresia, the baby, all the baby may survive because we have no death after the shunt and a, a tetralogy followed. But some the baby died after the, uh, the shunt and the pulmonary atresia. So let's try. But we have found that the, uh, the node already attempted the, the RVP shunt and he reported. And he used the uh, 12 millimeter the Hancock above the conduit with, the, with a clip uh, distal to the, 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 the valve to control primary blood flow. But 
he attempted in five patients, but all the patients died. And I think because of 12 millimeter Hancock, it's the huge to the uh, uh, small babies. And it's very difficult to control the, uh, the QPQS at this stage. The other attempt was the, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Kishimoto in Japan. The, uh, he reported uh, uh, the case report uh, using xenopericard extra cardiac conduit with the with the primary valve inside. And the, 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 the patient survived and after node, but they, and they soon died. So he didn't attempt and any case anymore. So uh, the, um, to prevent sudden circulatory collapse due to the low diastolic pressure, uh, uh, we have conducted the, uh, constructed the RBP shunt uh, using five millimeter Gore-Tex in a first stage palliation of hyperplast in uh, February 1998. And then uh, the, um, I did uh, four or five cases and the follow up until they reached to the Fontan. And then and the, um, the only the difference of the, the classical node and the RBP shunt is the, the either aortic pulmonary shunt or RBP shunt, either pulmonary atresia or tetralogy this procedure has uh, a theoretical advantage, uh, also disadvantage. The higher diastolic pressure improves the coronary perfusion because of the uh, diastolic pressure is high and then no coronary steel, and the less volume load on the RV, and the parasitial flow in pulmonary arteries, uh, and also the better cerebral and, and oxygen perfusion. The, uh, the disadvantage is the RV incision may be associated with uh, leg dysfunction or arrhythmias, and the lower QPQS may require earlier biotic grain, and also the lower P QPQS may limit PA growth. And the color Afro Doppler showing anti-grade flow from the RV into the, the conduit and the pulse Web Doppler demonstrating anti-grade flow through the conduit only during systole. And the pulse web Doppler demonstrating normal anti-grade flow in the proximal ascending aorta in both systole and diastole. So that means the uh, uh, much better uh, organ and cerebral perfusion. Uh, it compared to the classical node, the diastolic pressure is usually uh, 10 millimeter mercury or more higher. So the, uh, um, since 1998, uh, we have uh, performed 131 the infant in the classical hyper plus 102 and uh, an HHS variant 29 patient. The, um, during the time, the, the 32 cases had a, a P primary artery banding and the eight are the Bajan grain press node. And the, the weight range from 1.1 to 4.1, the median 2.7, and 10 pa patients are less than two kilos. Our postal management is basically the same as management for infant and the going other type of operation. Uh, we, uh, uh, we do delay serial closure and, and, and uh, uh, one time I, I closed the chest uh, soon after, then I lost uh, a couple of patients. Uh, then uh, I, I was back again to, uh, to, uh, to open the chest and then check the patient for uh, two or three days and close the chest. <coughs> No particular manipulation to control pulmonary and uh, systemic vascular distance. So our operative technique is the dual cannulation. One uh, 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 is to, uh, uh, to the innominator artery, 
with the three millimeter uh, Gore-Tex graft, and the other uh, arterial cannula was inserted through the duct to the descending aorta. So we perfused the whole body uh, to cool down to uh, 24 to 25 degrees centigrade, the single venous cannulation. We, we started this technique since uh, 1995. During the, uh, the, um, the 17 years, uh, we have uh, uh, several modifications to bet for better outcome. To avoid arch obstruction, we, uh, we now do an arch plasty. Uh, uh, and then the most of the patient, we, we can uh, reconstruct the neo aorta without uh, any uh, patch materials. One of the reasons that, that in Japan we cannot uh, get any homograft uh, or, or or animal product. It's all prohibited. Um, and avoiding to primary artery stenosis, the creation of RV hole using coronary puncture instead of uh, uh, making a hole with a scissors or knife. And the, and the RVP conduit with a PTFE cuff that the cuff works as a cushion to, to prevent the, uh, the distal PA stenosis. And now we use a linked PTFE graft uh, as a routine and the control of the blood flow using the clip on the PTFE tube. Initially, we we're very happy with the saturation of 90% or more uh, because the, the hemodynamics is okay. But we found that the, these patients have more uh, tricuff regurgitation after the stage one uh, node. So uh, we changed our, our uh, the policy to control the, uh, the saturation around 80 to 85% in the Lumea. So uh, these are the technical modification. Uh, I will show the video. So uh, uh, before going bypass on the table, we uh, make the uh, the cuff, the Gore-Tex. Normally, we use a the five millimeter uh, linked Gore-Tex now. And then uh, from bypass, uh, cool down to 24, 25 degrees. The, um, we uh, anastomose the, between the distal stump of the main PA and the and the, the PTFE cuff during the cooling phase on the, the beating heart. So another important technical modification uh, is a reconstruction of neo aorta. The, uh, the, I think the surgeons, all, most of the surgeons know the, the, uh, the opposite side of the innominate. The opposite side of the innominate arteries is the far away from the main PA and also the narrowest part of the neo aorta. So put uh, uh, three or four stitches to here, an inferior and also the superior, to, to, to make this part wider and then the shorter of the anastomosis site. And so this one, this part, become much closer to the main PA. Then um, the old ductal tissue excised and the dis and descend the aorta and the distal uh, primary arteries, distal um, neo aorta, uh, anastomosed directory. Uh, I normally use the an eight zero proline. 
And this time, the uh, the the arterial uh, perfusion cannula through the uh, duct to the descending aorta was removed, so that only the uh, the several perfusion through the innominate arteries. You you see the uh, the distance of the main PA, and here is not far away. So we, we so if the if the ascending aorta is uh, is uh, is very small, less than two or three millimeters, we uh, put a, 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 a several interrupted stitches uh, uh, to the the sinus, and then uh, the other reconstruction carried right out with the learning sutures. After reconstruction of neo aorta, we uh, check the perfusion of the coronaries. The other, other technical modification is to make a hole in RV. Now we uh, use um, and the four millimeters uh, coronary punches to excise the 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 muscles. Uh, uh, usually, the, 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 we we pass the hagar uh, uh, one millimeter bigger than uh, the graft. So usually, the six millimeter hagar should be passed. And then the uh, the ringed cortex. Was as most to the uh, the proximal uh, to the RV. We usually do uh, the couple of uh, the pastoring sutures along the hole. And normally you use uh, six zero proin and uh, the project sutures, and then the. Uh, the ring graft, it, it uh, pushed in to a so-called dunk technique. A very simple and very easy to do it. So this is the compression of the, the RVPA shunt. And then um, in some patients, we uh, controlled primary blood flow uh, to put a creep. When the patient becomes hypoxic, we ask the, the cardiologist to, to, to put the balloon, dilate, to, so that the creeps off. And then saturation goes up, and, and uh, uh, we can wait uh, another uh, uh, two or four weeks safely. So the 19 patient had a, a shunt flow control, and the, the, the timing is uh, three times at the time of the operation, and also the, uh, uh, at the time of uh, uh, delay state closures, and the, and, and or the both, and the saturation sitting around 80 or 85 percent. And after uh, putting a shunt, the uh, uh, track of regulation are, are much less compared to uh, before control. The diastolic pressure is always higher than the classical node. And we, uh, we check the, uh, uh, the ventricular function, uh, the, whether the, uh, the ventriculotomy caused ventricular dysfunction or not. But in, in, a, in, a, uh, in overall, the RV function is almost the same of the classical node, or some patient even better. So the, at the time of the grain, in the 84 page cases, uh, uh, we divide the conduit, and the 30% of the cases, that leave the conduit open, 70%. If the, uh, the, uh, the PA index is, is uh, bigger, 
and tricuspid regurgitation uh, is more than like moderate, we divide the conduit, no, uh, uh, no more uh, volume overload. If the primary artery, especially the left PA, is a little bit small, and tricuspid regurgitation is, is a trivial or none, we leave the, uh, the conduit open to increase the, the left primary artery growth. Uh, so this is the, the, a little different one, but the, uh, uh, our uh, stage one survival uh, is 90%, and the overall survival in, in eight years is 73%. Uh, we think that the risk of mortality is a lower body weight, less than 2.5, and the premature baby, the less than 37 weeks gestation, and the, the patient with significant tricuspid regurgitation. So in these high-risk group, uh, we do a, a, a bilateral primary artery banding uh, to do a rapid two-stage operation. We do not uh, use any like a stent to the duct or the wait uh, for uh, three, uh, two or three months to do a, a, a node with grain. Uh, we normally uh, wait uh, uh, two to four weeks until the, the patient, uh, the risk factor disappears. So the, the two thirds of the patient, uh, uh, normal risk patient, the, the stage one survival in this normal risk patient is 95% and overall survival is 87%. So the rapid two stage, we do a band, very simple, less than 2.5 or 3 millimeter vortex tube will cut, and the more than 2.5, 3.5. The 28 patient uh, uh, were done in this technique. The most really, the, the body weight small, and the most important thing is that the, we do this technique when I'm away from Japan. So the 28 patient with the bilateral banding and then eight days and 20 survived and survival rate is 71% uh, in a high risk group. So there's uh, the, another modification from uh, the Birmingham children in the UK with, from uh, Bill Brown's place. They put a shunt to the light of the neo aorta to prevent the, the distal P stenosis and also the uh, Schleiber in the Munich uh, reported the link uh, Gore-Tex instead of the usual Gore-Tex. So there's uh, the, the, uh, the randomized study and single ventricle reconstruction trial uh, run by uh, uh, Dr. Oe in the Michigan. The freedom from death transplant uh, in an RV patient is a little bit better than a classical node, but, it, but it's a, a signi not significant difference. But yeah, the other, another the, uh, uh, the technique is a hybrid. The, uh, the hybrid is a bilateral PA band and also the, 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 uh, the stent to the duct. So the hybrid concept is a less invasive procedure in a neonatal period and avoid an open heart surgery and the deep hypothermic secretary release. And one comprehensive open uh, heart procedure at the age approximate for the big operation. So the uh, uh, Grant Beach reported the, uh, their result in the 40 patient, the hybrid The hospital deaths in uh, 2.5, interstage deaths in 5%. So the 10% of the patient, patient developed significant retrograde stenosis into transverse aorta for the overall survival 82%. The uh, retrograde arch, uh, out, arch in, a high, in a hybrid approach. But the clinically important retrograde out the arch obstruction occurred in 24% of the hyperplasia. This is the, the, the one of the, the big problem after the, the, the stent to the duct. 
So you see the, uh, the, the stent, the obstruct distal uh, aorta. So the, uh, the, the sick kids reported the 58 patient and the 33 uh, 9 node and uh, 19 hybrid. The survival is similar, and peak growth uh, similar, and the, they recommend the randomized trials. Um, this is another paper uh, from Guy St. Thomas. The, they have a 211 patient the hyperplast, the, the mortality before stage two. Uh, in early years, 38%, and in the recent years, 34%. And they applied the hybrid approach. Uh, in Japan, the, uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Mitani uh, published the paper: continuous infusion of prostaglandin E1 instead of uh, 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 stent to the duct to keep the duct open. So the uh, the. So now we have uh, uh, three options, either a classical node or a sound shunt or hybrid. But if you uh, look at the, the, the published paper from a, a good unit, the, uh, the, the, all the, the, the result is now uh, very much similar. Either you use the, a classical node or sound procedure or a hybrid. Because I think the, the, the aim of the stage one is a, a, a the good ventricular function and no ex excessive volume load and the lower PVR and maintaining an optimum pr primary close and no tricuspid regurgitation. These are the aim after the first stage palliation. So the, the strategy in the management of hyperplast in the recent year or new, uh, near future is a fetal intervention or the cardiac uh, generation therapy. I just briefly shows our uh, 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 approach of progenitor cell therapy uh, uh, to the hyperplast. We take the, uh, the, the small piece of uh, light atrium. Uh, when we do uh, a biotion gland on the fontan, and then uh, this one, uh, uh, specimens are cultured for three or four weeks, and then uh, the then the, these cells are injected through, through the coronaries uh, directly to the myocardium by the, the cassette technique. Uh, we finished it phase one, and then, uh, then, <coughs> then uh, just to finish the phase two trial, a randomized trial, 17 patients, 17 patients. Um, so we send all the, the results to, to the government. This is the one example. The, um, the, the left-hand side, uh, one month after, after the grain, there's still the, the function is no good. In one year time, the ejection fraction improved 20%, and two years time, at 22%. And the three years time, uh, we we just analyzed now, uh, very recently, the, uh, the still ejection fractions improved uh, 23%. For the cardiac function in, in, in progenitor cell treated patient and control the, uh, the treated groups, um, ejection fraction improved a lot compared to the control group. So thank you very much, and I think the I hope one day all these babies will be salvaged. Thank you.